Okay, so we will now go to um, item number four, policy establishing criteria for applications to reconsider commission action. This has been on our agenda for um, several meetings now. It was brought to us at the last meeting for us to um, review, which we did. We did not want to uh, make any motions at that time in order to make sure that each, um, every, each and everyone that had any concern in regards to that particular um, document would be able to be heard. So since we did give everybody that opportunity, tonight is the evening that we will um, consider making a motion to adopt that or to not adopt it. So that is where we stand on item number four. So with that, I will ask for a motion for approval um, in regards to application to reconsider commission action. I make the motion that we approve the application for reconsider. Okay, there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? I will second that motion. Is there any discussion? Okay. Um, Again, we have opened this up every time for public comment, and I don't want to not allow for that this evening. So if there's anyone that did want to discuss it again, um, there is a motion and a second on the table. You would have one minute per person to do, to do so if there was anyone present that wanted to discuss it this evening. Anyone? Ms. Wilson? you on June the 22nd, Mary Wilson, uh, with my name, uh, and uh, recited a number of issues uh, that I saw as flaws in the draft policy. So I was rather chagrined uh, to see that um, um, none of those considerations were addressed in the most recent draft. Uh, it still contains the same flaws. It still contains uh, no real standards by which uh, a request for reconsideration would be uh, considered. It gives nothing to either the commission as far as uh, standards that they should look at in determining when to reconsider something. It gives nothing to members of the public who might want to request uh, that something be reconsidered. Um, it, it really gives no standards whatsoever. Uh, I do have a written um, uh, statement with some examples of uh, other uh, rules of reconsideration in different um, locales. Uh, and frankly, I suggest very strongly that this matter be tabled uh, and that it have a very good uh, and rigorous legal review so that you do not adopt something that is sort of a feudal kind of a policy. Uh, one of the flaws that uh, I see in the document, um, obviously we all know that this uh, came up as a result of uh, a request for reconsideration of the Monsanto gun case <coughs> application for special use, uh, and I, I would request if this policy uh, on uh, the rules for reconsideration is adopted this evening, that uh, it, certainly in, with respect to that particular request uh, for reconsideration and all others that might ever be brought before you, that, uh, that you at least give 15 days notice uh, to the public uh, of when a request has been made so that the public has an ample opportunity to uh, come and provide input to you uh, I can see a scenario where someone files a request for uh, uh, reconsideration on uh, the Thursday before your following meeting, uh, since the county offices are not open on uh, Friday. Uh, it is very likely that members of the public wouldn't even know about that uh, until Monday uh, to get a copy of what's been submitted. Um, we might see it on your agenda that it's going to be taken up at your meeting, but we wouldn't have a copy in order to know uh, what we're to uh, respond to and what the, what the rationale is for moving to reconsider. So I would request that uh, at least 15 days uh, notice be available to the public after someone has submitted a request so that the public has an opportunity to see that request and properly prepare. 
Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Okay, um, Dennis, in regards to the notice, we did talk about that at the last meeting. Um, and we talked about that being handled administratively to ensure that everyone would be um, notified. Do you have a response to that? Um, not, not really anything in addition to what we discussed previously is we've taken into consideration uh, appropriate notice that uh, is required by the Open Meetings Act and we've taken into consideration the rules of procedure for, for appeals. So we've tried to to develop a policy that, that fits all of that. And so uh, it's not that this was done without thought and uh, so we've, we've taken that into Okay, thank you, Steve. The public notification for the commission is very similar to the public notification for the Planning and Zoning Board, where we have to post, for the board, we have to post signs at the property a minimum of 15 days before the, next, the upcoming meeting where the action is going to be heard. With things that are coming before the commission, we do post public notice in the Mountain View Telegraph, and we make sure that that notice comes out more than 15 days before the actual commission meeting where the action item be heard. And I don't see that that would be changing. Okay, thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the table. Seeing no one else that wishes to speak, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, the motion unanimously passes. We will now go to item number five, updates. Yes, sir. May I make one brief statement? Um, on item four. Okay, go ahead. Jim Green, president of the Montana Mountain Gun Club. And on behalf of the Montana Mountain Gun Club, we want to applaud your decision to establish a reasonable and fair appeal process while the Montana Mountain Gun Club intends to pursue all legal avenues available to us. We believe this process will help all the parties in the future. For the record, the Montana Mountain Gun Club will proceed with its new appeal process voted on the night, and we will adhere to the requirements mandated in your uh, process. Okay, thank you, Mr. Grant. Thank you. Anyone else? 